All right. We have been working on our prints. Your print can be inspired by Charlie Johnson if you want, or it doesn't have to be. It can be inspired by one of these themes, loyalty, brotherhood, selflessness, courage, compassion, responsibility, patriotism, integrity. And you could do anything you want related to those themes. I do have a Charlie Johnson example for you. And I just wanted to give you some tips as you are finishing up your design. So for this artwork, we are going to be using a block that's four inches by six inches. And there's paper over there that's four by six inches. Or your packets that you have, the front page of the packet is also four by six inches. So you can use any combination of these to create your final design. But when you make your final design, make sure you're, you're using a pencil. I know some of you use a Sharpie. Um, I'm sorry, you could go back and add a pencil, but I, I should have changed that. So use a pencil when you do it. And if you want, because we're carving this design and not drawing it, you can use a light box or the window to trace things. Or don't tell Mr. DeBonis, but you could also use your Chromebook. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Oh, hey, Chromebook. Oh, there it goes. Um, and you can very gently and carefully trace. If you're doing text, I will allow you to do like one word. It doesn't have to be the word that you are focused on your theme necessarily, but I do want you guys, instead of handwriting it, to actually kind of type it out. See how I'm changing the size, changing the font? I'm just on Google Docs. And then once you get a size and a font that you like, very carefully you can line it up and you can use your pencil to trace. So really do a good job with this. Go slow, go careful. Use your Chromebook. If you want to trace, you can because we are going to eventually be carving, probably starting tomorrow we'll carve. And I'm doing the courage part. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's kind of hard to see on the screen. I'm being very gentle. My pencil is kind of dull. I'm sketching it out carefully, and then I'll fix it up off the computer. Ooh, pretty cool. Did you guys know you could do that? Okay. If you have a touch screen, you can always share your doc with me, and I can print it out. And then after you have your design on there, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm actually coloring everything in with my pencil. So you will have to color it in with your pencil. I know that's kind of annoying, but I'll show you what's going to happen in a minute. So I'm coloring all of my spaces in with a pencil. I'm coloring all my letters in with a pencil. I'm going really quick just so you guys don't have to watch me forever. But when you do this, you'll go really slow. I'm just using a regular number two pencil. I can let you borrow one if you need to. There's some over by the sign-out sheet if you need a pencil. And I also find a lot of pencils in the bins. People tend to leave their pencil in the bin if you need one. And you color it in, color it in, color it in. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Most of you won't be ready for this today, but I do just want to show you. I have one printing block for everybody. If you mess up, you're stuck with it. I mean, technically there is two sides, so you could use the other side but you really kind of only get one shot at this. So do a really, really, really careful job. And if you make a mistake, embrace it, just go with it. So when you get your printing block, you do want to wash and dry it. When you get your printing block, I don't know if you'll all notice, but they are packed in powder, like baby powder, because they're shipped in the summer and they'll stick together. So they have powder all over them. So I just go to the sink, I wash it, I dry it up and make sure it's really dry. I write my name on the side because it is double-sided. I will be able to use both sides if I really need to. So I'm going to write my name on the side. God bless you. And it's washed. It's dried. And here's the wacky part that you're not even going to believe. The reason I colored it in is with pencil is because pencil doesn't like to stay on paper. Has that ever happened to you guys? You get pencil all over the ha your hand when you're writing a lot or drawing a lot? Yeah. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So I'm going to take Charlie Johnson. I'm going to flip him upside down. So the pencil part is on the block. It's all lined up. I used to tape it, but now I just hold it with my non-dominant hand. So the hand that I don't draw with is holding the paper. And I'm almost laying my pencil down. It's not straight up like this, but my pencil is almost laying down. And as hard as I can, I'm scribbling on the back of my paper. 
So I'm laying it down so it doesn't go through. If it does rip, it's not the end of the world, but laying it down will make it easier. I'm pressing really hard. I don't know if you can see my knuckles on here. No, you can't really see. But they're like white. I'm going the other direction. I still haven't let my paper move at all. Ah, I'm coloring the whole thing. Whole thing. I'm pressing hard. I can barely breathe. Oh, oh. And I'm pressing really hard. I'm going back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. I'm scribbling the whole back of the paper, trying not to rip it, but applying a lot of pressure. And if you do this right and you actually apply a lot of pressure, and by the way, I'm using a regular pencil, not a mechanical pencil, because it gives me more surface area. If you do this correctly, the graphite from the pencil should come off the paper and onto the block. You ready? Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh my God, look at the words. What are they? Curves. Yes, but what are they? Backwards. You guys can read backwards. You're amazing. It's okay. Your letters will be backwards on the block. Leave them backwards because when we print it, it gets flipped again and it's forward. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but on a stamp, if you look at a stamp that has the text, I'm trying to find one, the text is always backwards. So this is my created by stamp. But if you actually look at the rubber, it's backwards. And when you stamp it, it's forward again. So when this happens, I've seen so many people freak out, erase it, and try to fix it. Leave it backwards on your block, and trust me. Cody. Um, which one? So you can't use Sharpie? Um, what a lot of people did was they did a sh their design in Sharpie first. If you did, that's fine. But now go over it one more time with pencil, because the Sharpie won't transfer, but the pencil will. So if you have, pretend this was Sharpie. If this was my design in Sharpie, it's no big deal. I'll just take some time this period. And now I'll go back and I'll color over top of all my Sharpie. Okay. So that's not a problem. It's just, it's kind of a nice extra step. And speaking of Sharpie, Cody, I actually go back in now. And this is what clogs the Sharpies up. Sometimes I do go in and I'll outline all my pencil lines with Sharpie. Because you guys can't see this. I kind of don't want to do it, but I will. If you take your hand and go like this, it does smudge. Do you see what I just did to the side? Oh, no. So I do go over my design with Sharpie very carefully because when you're carving, it's really annoying if your design smudges, especially like the little tiny letters, things like the eyes. So I do go over my design because the Sharpie won't smudge at all. And I'll show you just real quick. This is another. I have a whole bunch of printing blocks. This is one I did of me and started to carve. So you can see I sharpied over it and then I carved out a bunch of places. Kind of weird, right? But that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop this.